The Philippines versus China. Are we in troubling waters? What's up, Savvy Expats? Welcome to our panel, The Daily Expat, where I keep you updated on the latest current events, news, and stories that is happening in the Philippines so that you, as an expat, never skip a beat. We've all already heard about the infamous dispute between the People's Republic of China and the Philippines over the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea, what have you. China supposedly claims it's their territory, so they call it the South China Sea, while the Philippines claims it's our territory, therefore, of course, we call it the West Philippine Sea. Well, the question is, whose sea is it and why in the world is this parcel of land so important to both countries? We're going to dive into that in a moment, but let me just say, this topic, believe it or not, is a make it or break it point for many expats deciding to move to the Philippines in 2023. Because God forbid China goes to war with the Philippines, guys. I'm out, y'all. And so it is a valid concern that this issue can continue to cause tension between these two countries furthermore. At the end of the day, even the Republic of China sees the Philippines as a province of their country. But enough talk, let's dive into what this whole ordeal is about over this well-disputed salty waters. Starting with the question of what makes this sea so important? Well, it's worth noting that this sea has not only been a hotbed for the Philippines and China, but also for Vietnam, Taiwan, Malaysia, and Brunei. The dispute over these parcels of land and surrounding waters involves these Spratly Islands, a chain of over 200 small islands. That said, what's so important about these salt waters and small islands? Well, in terms of trade, major shipping lanes are contained within this sea in which $5.3 trillion worth of goods pass through each year, $1.2 trillion of which travel to and from the United States alone. It's also a treasure trove of invaluable natural resources. It's estimated that the South China Sea holds more than 11 billion barrels of oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. To help you visualize just how much oil and gas that is, the United States alone consumes over 20 million barrels of oil and 88 and a half billion cubic feet of natural gas every day. That means it would take over 550 days for America to consume that much oil and over 2,000 days for the entire nation of the US to consume that much natural gas. Not to mention, the sea is home to a large area of natural coral reefs. It's estimated that the total reef area is about 12,000 square kilometers or about 4,600 square miles. That's about three and a half times the size of Los Angeles. And above these precious resources lies an important food source, especially in Southeast Asia, which is fish. One of the five largest fishing zones is within the South China Sea, whose fishing industry employs over 3 million people and provides over 12% of the world's harvested fish. And so it really cannot be stressed enough that the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea is an extremely important location because of these reasons. So it's no wonder why it's an ever increasing hotspot of conflict. With that, over recent years, numerous events of hostility has occurred. In August of this year, there was an incident in which a large Chinese Coast Guard ship sprayed a water cannon at a smaller Philippine boat attempting to carry supplies to the Philippine Marines. China acknowledged and defended this action, saying that the cannons were supposedly used as a warning to avoid direct blocking and collisions when repeated warnings were ineffective. After this incident, the Philippine government summoned the Chinese ambassador, to which it conveyed its strongest protest against this incident. What's more is that in September, just recently, the Philippine government has accused the Chinese Coast Guard of laying down a floating barrier in the southeastern portion of the Scarborough Shoal. This prevented Filipino fishing boats from entering it. However, in compliance with the instructions of President Marcos, the Philippine Coast Guard conducted a special operation that removed the barrier. And even just within this month, a Philippine gunboat sailed into waters around the same shoal and the Chinese Coast Guard claimed to have chased it away. General Romeo Bronner Jr. said that the authorities were still looking into what happened and he said it's more likely quote-unquote Chinese propaganda. He also said that if they ever had a ship there, they would not agree to be driven away from the Philippine exclusive economic zone. And let's be real guys, by all means, the Philippines is no match for China unfortunately, so it has to resort 
to softer means of opposition, such as legal arbitration. Fortunately for the Philippines, the permanent court of arbitration ruled heavily in favor for the Philippines recently. According to the ruling, the Chinese claims to have historic rights and resources within the infamous Nine Dash Line. And none of the land that China claims in the Spratly Island is an island that can generate a 200 nautical mile in the exclusive economic zone. In addition to this, China had violated Philippine sovereign rights by getting in the way of Philippine oil exploration and stopping Philippine fishing vessels from operating. Also in return, the Philippines did not prevent Chinese fishing vessels from operating. They reclaimed the land that the Philippines had sovereign rights to explore and to use the natural resources. China, however, rejected this ruling. It's also worth mentioning that diplomatic protests were also a thing during this time. As of September 12, the Philippines had lodged 43 such protests against Chinese incursions in this year alone, and 99 since President Marcos took over. Now we have to ask, why does China lay claim to this 9 dash line? According to the Chinese embassy on Canada's website, China's activities supposedly go back all the way 2,000 years. In their perspective, Chinese sailors had discovered the South China Sea Islands and only Chinese people lived and worked on these islands. In 1948, China published a map clearly marking the nine dotted line in the sea. The countries bordering the South China Sea and the international community recognized this claim. And whether or not they've explicitly agreed, no foreign country questioned or objected to this claim at the time. The nine dotted line demarcation was a line drawn on many official maps after the Second World War by countries like the United States, the Soviet Union, and Japan. China also stated that even countries like the Philippines and Vietnam had maps clearly marking the Spratly Islands as Chinese territory. Then, in 1958, the Chinese government issued a proclamation declaring several territories in this region as belonging to China. And lastly, China says that in 1998, the Chinese government implemented a law reaffirming the historical claim in the South China Sea. Now, I want to reiterate all that I just said is a position coming from the Chinese government on why they believe the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea belongs to them. But what about the Philippine government? Where are we coming from? All right, so information on this is more limited, but back in 1946, when it was called the Southern Islands, Vice President, and I might butcher this guys, Elpidio Corinio reiterated the Calayaan Islands as part of the Philippines. Then in 1978, President Ferdinand Marcos Sr. issued a proclamation declaring the Calayaan Island Group as territory of the Philippines which, by the way, is part of the Spratly Islands. And I get it, the island names are very confusing, we're talking about so many different pieces of land. But also, another fact supporting the Philippines' claim of the Spratly Islands is that all of the islands claimed by the Philippines are within its exclusive economic zone. Not to mention that the Scarborough Shoal, too, is within the zone. Now that leads us to question, whose land does it really belong to? As I'm not a lawyer or an expert on this matter, I cannot say for sure who is in the right. However, like I mentioned earlier, the permanent court of arbitration ruled favorably for the Philippines. So legally speaking, as of recent, it is within the Philippines' favor that this is our land. But in April of this year, a near collision occurred between a Chinese boat and a Philippine vessel which commanding officer Rodel Hernandez described as an encounter between David and Goliath. Though that description was just for that singular event, we can extrapolate this viewpoint to be for this entire dispute. This whole ordeal can be viewed as a conflict between David and Goliath, and I'm sure you can guess who is who. And despite being magnitude smaller than China, we have to say that the Philippines is holding up a respectable fight against China. So will we ever see an end to this conflict? Do you ever think that greedy China will ever relinquish its claims to land within the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea? We will never know until the day comes, but let us know your thoughts and how you think the dispute will progress in the years to come within the comments down below. And so thank you for watching Savvy Expats and we'll see you in the next headline. God bless.